The world has many different environments, such as the sea and the land. Within these environments, there are places where living things find a place to live. This home suits them, as they have everything they need there to survive. Shelter from predators, or from the heat, or from the cold. food, water, and for animals they need oxygen to breathe. This place where all their needs for survival are taken care of is called their habitat. Take them out of their habitat and put them in a different habitat and they will die. Let's look at the soldier crab for example. Soldier crabs obtain their oxygen from the air like we do, but they need to remain slightly wet so that they can absorb the oxygen. They can't live in fresh water as their bodies need salt water to survive, but they can't go too deep otherwise they would drown. Their bodies are built for walking, not swimming, so the best place for them to live is along the foreshore. But it needs to be a calm beach, not one with lots of waves. It can't be rocky because their body is too round to fit under rocks to hide from predators such as birds. So their best habitat is a flat beach where the waves are gentle and the sand enables them to make a burrow underground. As the seashore is a place where the sea meets the land, a great deal of natural material is washed ashore by the waves. This is minute pieces of seaweed, plankton and other organic matter. This means the soldier crab's habitat is covered in food. Attached to the grains of sand are microscopic particles of organic dust. The soldier crab scoops up the wet sand, sucks the natural material off the grains and then spits out the sand. Let's compare the soldier crab to the porcelain crab. They also eat microscopic particles of organic dust, but they can breathe underwater, drawing the oxygen straight out of the sea. So their food is floating around, not attached to grains of sand. Watch how they collect their food. Unlike the soldier crabs, porcelain crabs prefer a rocky habitat, as their bodies are flat and can easily squeeze under rocks to hide. Another crab that lives among rocks is the decorator crab. It uses its claws to collect its food, such as seaweed or the remains of dead animals, but its body, like the soldier crab, is too round to squeeze under some rocks. So it picks up shells and seaweed and sticks these to its body as a disguise. Now that it's camouflaged, its main predator, the octopus, will have a hard time finding it. The seashore offers a variety of habitats for birds, from sandy areas, rocky areas, or in the nearby deeper water just off the shore. Which birds live in which area is determined by how they get their food. The white-faced heron has long thin legs that allow it to creep carefully along the shallows without disturbing the water which would scare away the fish that it's hunting for. Its grey belly camouflages with the sky, making it hard for the fish to see them. Its long neck and long beak allow it to reach out and quickly stab at a fish. But without hands or a knife and fork, swallowing a fish is a little more difficult than catching it.
The sooty oyster catcher also has a long beak and thin legs for wading in the shallows, but its black body would easily be seen by fish. Its beak is a little more rounded at the end and bends slightly upwards, allowing it to dig into the sand or prize open shells. So this bird eats worms, snails and mussels. What do you think this silver gull is doing with its feet? The cormorant also lives near the seashore, but in the deeper water because its feet are webbed which allow it to swim. With a long body like the heron and a long beak with a hooked end, this bird is also a fish eater, but it dives under the water and swims after its fish to catch. Microscopic structures in the inner layer of their feathers act like a wetsuit to keep their skin dry and the bird warm. But after many dives, the outer feathers can become too wet. Every now and then they need to sunbathe to dry out to enable them to fly to the next area to feed. So far we've only talked about animals. Let's look at seaweed. It's a living thing too and an important life form in the sea just as plants are on land. Most seaweeds are not a plant at all, but in fact a life form called algae. But like plants, they need sunlight to survive. Have you ever noticed how most plants are green? The green colour helps them collect sunlight. But not all algae are green, many are brown. But if we take this piece of brown seaweed and dip it in boiling water, we can see that underneath they are in fact green after all. Algae need to live at a depth where they can obtain sunlight, so they can't go too deep. You often find algae on the rocky seashore because there is a surface for them to hold on to and they can obtain lots of sunlight. 